So what I would like to do is first kind of set up what it is, which if I was to take a stab at it, it's um, the to, to give like a concept that listeners may understand or, or see in their life is if you're looking at water as it's running down or running over something and there's that glossiness to the top of it, that that glossiness is actually another state. So we know that water will evaporate when you boil it, for example, the steam that's evaporating water. We know that it's stable in a liquid form in a glass, like I'm drinking as we talk, um, or also that it freezes and it's you know ice. And we know those things. Um, a fun thing that I always like to bring up to twist people's noodle about ice is that ice skating is actually melting the ice for pressure, uh, which is why you're able to you know go on it, which now I think has something to do with the fourth phase of water that I wanted to ask you about. Um, and what you have discovered or, or rediscovered, because I think you even have talked, I heard you talk about that uh, there was somebody like around 100 years ago who proposed a gel-like state, um, is that that glossiness on uh, water as it's going over a stream or something like that, that sheen, that like plasticity that we kind of think of um, is actually another state of water, which is a gel uh, that is, uh, what is it, H, it's H3 instead of H2. Uh, H three O two. H three O two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wrote it on my whiteboard. I think behind me. Um, yeah. So it's it's a different state, different structure. It looks like a crystal, um, and it has some special funky properties that potentially can be tapped for many different things, um, like it, the water filtration. Your I saw a diagram on your website of filtering water without power, power, which makes utter sense and is is fascinating. Um, so. Is there anything, any color you would like to add to that as far as a the definition? There's, there's another phase of water. There's, it's a gel. It has a specific crystalline structure to it, um, and it exists at the interface yeah, between it, it, water and the outside world. Yeah, it, well, it's, not, it's not just at the interface that you're, uh, you're talking about. Um, this phase of water uh, builds, uh, whenever you have a, a surface uh, that has a certain character to it, we say hydrophilic, water-loving, and most surfaces are, are like that. Um, what happens is that, um, so here, let's say, here's the surface of, uh, of some material that has that characteristic, and the water is sitting next to it. And the first, the first layer of water molecules, when it hits that surface, when it feels that surface, it undergoes a radical transformation from ordinary H2O to, uh, and, and, and H2O, you know, water molecules are bouncing around, uh, they're randomly oriented, bouncing around a fierce number of times per second or even per femtosecond. Uh, there, there's no real structure uh, to it. And what happens is that that first layer then undergoes a transformation and becomes ordered. And if you were to look in, in this, uh, direction, uh, um, the perpendicular, um, along a line perpendicular to the surface, you'd see hexagons. You'd see a honeycomb kind of structure repeating hexagons. That's the, the, the first layer. And then that first layer uh, becomes a template for the buildup of the second layer, uh, which serves as a template for the buildup of the third, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this kind of, we say, fourth phase water, uh, the other terms that we use for it, um, uh, uh, it, it builds layer by layer. And the number of layers is not trivial. Uh, it can build, we, we have examples in the laboratory where you can have as many under maybe extreme circumstances as like a million layers. We're talking macroscopic uh, scale. Um, and the way we, we, we discovered it um, is we, we, we took some water and we put some particles in the water. And uh, um, we use many kinds of particles, but initially something called microspheres, little tiny spherical particles, one micrometer or so in diameter. And they're all suspended in the water. And you plunk in this, uh, let's say, gel, it was how we started. Um, and we, we saw that, in, looking in the microscope, we saw that, um, so here, ne next to the surface, I'm trying to get my uh, hand in, <laughs> in the image. Um, it's not working very well. But uh, ne next to the uh, surface of that gel, we began to see that the, these microspheres were excluded. They were pushed out. So this region that was devoid of microspheres began to grow and grow and grow. And we found out later, as these layers grew and grew and grew, you get pushed out. And that's why we first call this exclusion zone because it excludes 
you know, it seemed uh, uh, logical. Uh, and actually, it worked very well um, because exclusion zone EZ is easy <laughs> to remember. <laughs> and um, so it doesn't work in some other countries, though, because they use Z instead of Z. So it's not, it's a little bit awkward to say it's EZ to remember, but EZ to remember really works well. And that, I think that was a maybe a, a kind of mistake because it doesn't really tell you uh, very much about the character of what's inside this EZ. Um, and that's why we later called it fourth phase, but the two are more or less equivalent. So, so what happens is this phase grows. And, um, and there were just let me just tell you a couple of characteristics that are fundamental. Um, the first characteristic, well, it's, it's structured. And, and this is the equivalent of what people once called, and still do to some extent, called structured water. And um, we're not the first <laughs> at all to, to uh, discover structure. This has been for almost 100 years. In, in, uh, espoused by um, the late Gilbert Ling, who spent his whole career um, basically suggesting that in, inside every one of your cells, the water is not ordinary water, but it's structured water. And also by the great um, Halbert St. Georgie, who is considered to be the father of modern biochemistry. Um, and and uh, he discovered vitamin C, he got a Nobel Prize, and he was involved in many different fields of, of science, a, a, great, a great hero, so creative, uh, just really an a, amazing thinker and, 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 and doer. So in a sense, you know, our work, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, so, so we knew that there's got to be something there, and, and what we, we found uh, is this hexagonal kind of layered structure. And we were curious, and uh, at the time we didn't know what to expect, we stuck an electrode into that zone and another electrode far away in the water that was way beyond. And we measured the electrical potential difference. Uh, we wanted to see if there was any charge in, 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 in this EZ or fourth phase. To our surprise, there was. And typically, it was negatively charged. Uh, this zone, this exclusion zone, fourth phase, typically bore substantial negative charge. And then we're thinking, how could that be? Because, you know, it starts with water, H2O, and H2O is neutral. So how do you start with water, and the water gets transformed into something that's negative, There's something missing from the logic? Or uh, there needs to be some positive charge somewhere else. And we found the positive charge. So. Um, as the uh, fourth phase grows, uh, negatively charged, and, and protons get kicked out. So the positive charge lies beyond um, this, this zone. So you've got negative in the exclusion zone and positive outside. It's a battery. You stick two electrodes in, you measure an electrical potential difference. And, you know, when you have a battery, batteries have energy. Uh, they produce energy, right? And we found by sticking two electrodes, one in the negative, one in the positive, you could light a light bulb. Um, and you can get energy uh, from, from this. That is energy from water. And th this was, for, for us, this was an amazing revelation because, you know, if this stuff exists inside your body, it, it means that it contains energy and it could produce energy for your, your, your body. Uh, let alone the prospect of uh, producing energy for any any use that you can conceive of, if you can get the energy level up to some practical um, level, and of course that's a that's a, a challenge. So, any any rate, that's another characteristic of of this fourth phase that typically it bears negative charge. A third or fourth or whatever characteristic is, um, you know, if you scratch your head and think about it, usually you can't get something for nothing, right? So if you're, if you're able to get electrical energy out of this, there must be some input energy, uh, right, that starts it all, uh, because, you know, you have something that gets put in and something that, that comes out. Uh, and so what is it? Well, we found um, that after several years, 
and um, several years of a lot of head scratching, that's why I'm missing some hair, um, that it came from the sun. Um, we found that it was light. And, and this was an observation made by a student, um, an undergraduate student who was doing what he was not supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know how that goes. And the younger they are, in my experience, the more curious they are. Um, people tend to lose their curiosity with, with age, or at least most, most do. So the student was, uh, was doing the kind of experiment I just described uh, with the microspheres and the gel, or, uh, whatever. And he noticed that um, on his right side there was a gooseneck lamp. So he took the lamp and he shined it on the chamber out of curiosity. And um, he ran into my office and called me, please take a look. And I looked and I was just amazed because the region that received the illumination, the exclusion zone was three times the size of the region that didn't uh, receive the illumination. And so, you know, it didn't take a genius to figure out that, well, it looks like the energy of light, photons, are responsible for building or providing the energy uh, to build this EZ and to separate the charge that I just told you about. And of course, after that, we we um, embarked on on studies to find out which wavelengths of light were responsible, and we didn't know. Um, and uh, you know, so we we explored uh, wavelengths at the short end from the ultraviolet through the visible spectrum through infrared, and we saw ultraviolet nothing, uh, visible light almost nothing. Uh, until we got to the reds, when we saw just a little bit, and then we went to longer wavelengths to the infrared, and and there it was amazing. Just a, a very small amount of infrared energy would result in huge buildup um, of what I've been talking about. So we were able to conclude, um, you know, this is it's not a complicated system. Um, you start with water um, under the right circumstances, the right kind of template, if you will. Um, you provide infrared energy, um, and this easy builds up um, as a result. It separates charge, gives you, uh, it creates electrical energy out of light. Um, that's that that's the um, um, tra transition that that occurs. Uh, that, uh, the water is a transducer. It's a transducer that transduces uh, light energy and perhaps other kinds in into essentially order and electrical um, energy. So, so th those are the, you know, some of the more essential features of uh, what we, we discovered.